So we now have the pattern pieces for the coat lining. So this is the front lining pattern. It's, I've already uh, cut it out and snipped everywhere and done a tailor tack there for the armhole notch. And the same with the back lining. I've cut it out already, snipped everything, done a tailor tack for the armhole notch and snips for the um, tucks and, and all the seam um, allowances. And here is the sleeve lining pattern. So again, everything has been snipped and the armhole notches are tailor tacked. So I'm going to remove this, these patterns. So I can then push one uh, pattern, front pattern there and the other one there. So now these are ready to sew up along the side seam and the shoulder. So you basically construct the lining like a little mini, um, you know, garment itself, like a little mini coat that's going to go inside the coat. So we just do the regular order side seams and shoulders, then I will and sew up the sleeves, so I'll do two opposite sleeves, and I'll insert the sleeve into the lining. And then um, the more important thing to really outline and show in detail is inserting the lining into the jacket. So I have sewn the body section of the lining for the coat. So that's that there, and I'm going to sew up the two sleeves and insert them. A little reminder on sleeves, when you take your pattern off, that you be sure to have two opposite sleeves. So I'm going to fold the pattern, take the sleeve pattern there. trick to be sure you have two opposite sleeves is to fold uh, one this way so with the top one folding um, sort of up and over itself and the bottom one folding down and underneath itself okay okay so I can see I have um, two opposites then I'm going to do a gather a stitch or an E stitch they say on the in between the two notches just to pull it into shape so that I can insert it into the armhole so I've now sewn up my sleeve and matched this, this sleeve to this armhole. I come always from the outside to match so I can see the front armhole uh, notches. So this is the front sleeve and front bodice so they match and then the back. Uh, so I come from the front and pinch it here and then turn it around and come this way from the inside. All right, so you can see my tailor tacks are lining up I have pinned it already here, but that's a little notch and we'll line it up with that shoulder seam. So then I will pin here and here. And I have done an E stitch here and pulled it slightly so that that just um, will help arrange that seam allowance and help it be more cooperative so it will be easier to pin it. So I will pin it all around and stitch it up now. So here is the lining for the coat um, completed. So here is the coat block that I'm going to insert the lining into. So if I open it up, you can see facings along here and the hem along here. And so the hem um, has been blind hemmed already. So it was a hem facing and has the extra bit on it for the seam allowance to sew to the lining. And so this was folded back two centimetres and uh, blind hemmed already all the way along so that it is ready to um, insert the lining. So the outside looks like that in a blind hem. You can't really uh, see the stitching. 
Um, I've also done it on the sleeve. So the sleeve hem um, has been blind hemmed already. Again, folded back a couple, two, and two, or two and a half centimeters back and the stitching is already completed there. So these hems are held up. So the, they need to be held up independently of the lining holding them up. So they get stitched, the lining stitches there and has a little overhang. So if you forget to do this stitch, you can do it after you've inserted the line. It's just much more awkward, but just the odd time someone forgets to. So it can be done after, just more awkward. So doing it before is better. OK, so now I'm going to open this up. And just to say, you will maybe notice that the facings are shorter there. So that was because this was not designed to do the uh, to, to insert a lining into originally and now that I'm doing this demo from home because of COVID I um, had to adjust my seam allowance and all there so that this would work so it's going to end up being slightly shorter facing then would be optimal so just to say that so that when you see it generally speaking the deeper uh, facings like the one on the hem would be um, standard so this would usually be a bit bigger okay but it doesn't affect the general principles and steps for what we are doing here so we are going to be taking the lining and we are going to be inserting it here so we're going to be uh, placing it all along the um, facing all along here And all along there and basically we're going to pin it all in and it's one big long stitch to stitch it so I'm going to take my jacket and our coat and I'm going to turn it sort of this way round inside out really so I can see the whole facing there and then I'm going to um, so this is the right side of the facing and I have my right side of my lining and I'm going to place the two right sides together. I have that and I have my centre back notch to line up my um, pleat with and etc going all the way around. Okay, so this is now pinned in all the way from the top and over around here, pleat and down around the second side so I can take my machine and sew right the way up and around. Just a little note, this is the curve and there'd be two kind of opposite curves so when you're pinning sometimes there's a little wobble on the seam allowance but as we know along the 1.5 it will match but just so that you're aware if you're um, pinning and if your garment is a little more curved at the facing it might even be a little more dramatic you may need an extra couple of pins just in that curved um, section just to help with your uh, stitching okay so I have sewn in 
this seam all the way along. So I didn't really show the stitching because um, I'm assuming everybody um, is proficient with their sewing but just to say that you know it is a little slippy the lining is slippy so if it's the first time doing lining um, you know just to, to be aware that it is a little harder to work with because it's slippy it is curved and particularly along here you're talking about two um, opposite curves so pin it well and so although I might say oh it's one big seam it's not the easiest of seams you know there's a big curving here the lining is slippy and there's two opposite curves here so don't just put a few pins in and and um, you know go for it in terms of the stitching kind of take your time to really s pin well um, anyway I just thought I'd say that because I pin quite quickly and I'm used to it so I might have made it look a little bit simpler than it is okay so once you've got that in I'm just going to turn it right way out so you can see so that's it you see that's it turned around so you can see it's attached all the way to the uh, facing there and at the moment it's still unattached at the hem and um, at the ends of the sleeves we're going to push these sleeves in you can see our, our tuck coming there and you can see it's all bumpy and wobbly because I need to snip in a little bit there and press the seam open first and then I can press it back down so I need to do all that um, before I proceed and then the next step will be um, going on to the hem so it's easier to leave the bottom hem open while we work on the sleeves uh, so we'll so that we can get into the sleeve so we'll do the sleeves first we'll attach the sleeves first and then we'll finish by doing the hem so here I'm just putting a few snips in to release some pressure along the curved sections it's more the lining um, seam allowance that needs it there but um, you can do that all along and maybe a little bit down here as well just a few it's not severe so even just a little bit of releasing will help okay so those seams have been pressed and I've pushed the um, sleeve the aligning sleeve into the um, coat sleeve uh, so the lining is incorrectly and I always do that just to be sure that the lining is incorrectly and that at no point is the uh, lining sleeve twisted um, so I'm putting my arm all the way in and I can feel the lining at the end and now I know for sure that when I see this that it's in the right position um, and I always come from the outside of the garment I always feel like it makes most sense logically and then I can trust I put my arm in there's no twist these two seams need to line up they're the only seam I have and then I kind of put them right side to right side so I know that needs to sew like that I'm holding here now I'm going to put my hand in through and underneath the lining of the coat in between the lining of the coat and the coat fabric itself this has been nicely named by previous students as no man's land so I'm going to call that no man's land I'm going in there um, and I'm going in in the sleeve as well in between the lining and the actual coat itself so I'm going into no man's land here all the way up I still am holding there and now I've got my hands that are coming from the inside in no man's land and I'm actually grabbing this now what you might like to do yourself is actually pin there so I'm just going to pin it that way we know it's secure okay and I've got it there here my fingers from the inside are pinching that right next to the pin and I'm going to pull that right the way through out the bottom pulling it through no man's land out okay and you get this very strange looking scenario where you have a sleeve and a, a lining sleeve together um, and attached and the reason I did all that step beforehand is so that I know there's no twist on my sleeve and that I'm lining this up correctly I'm going to pull this back out 
like this so that my hem is kind of oh okay I have a hem facing um, and this is then going to kind of go inside this like that all right so we okay so I'm actually I'm going to go in now and take the pin out because it's kind of on the wrong in the incorrect side so I'm going to just take it out and pin it on this side now Okay, with these seams lined up. And now I can just pin all the way along here. And I'm going to just stitch all the way along. So I have already hemmed it, you see, but I've hemmed it nice and deep. So I have plenty of room here for getting into the machine. So be sure when you do your blind hems that they are a good bit away. It makes it a bit easier. I mean, they need to be at least two centimeters down, but you could go two and a half and it gives you just a little bit more room to move. So everything gets very twisted up and in a mess. And you want to be careful if you have fabric, if your coat or jacket is of a fabric, say like do be on silk or something that gets very creased and remembers its creases, you, you know, you kind of have to be careful at this stage not to be just bunching everything up and, you know, so all these wrinkled bits are like that. Okay, so now I have it. And like I said, everything's getting very twisted up. That's grand. We're going to go in and stitch it in the machine now. So now I'm at the machine and I have my sleeve lining pinned up against my sleeve hem here, edge to edge, pinned nicely. Um, and so it might seem a little awkward in the machine. Sometimes people say to me, oh, how could you possibly sew that? But this is how you do it. You literally just pull it um, out like this and put it on your machine. Just be prepared that things will be all kind of bunched up and twisted up on this side and that that's normal and that again like so often we just need to concentrate on our little bit that we're sewing here. guide and have a look keep your eye on the 1.5 if that's your seam allowance and stitch away and then just be sure the piece in front of you isn't tucked or pulling so again the usual thing, using my finger underneath, making sure my next bit is flat, lined up against the 1.5 and I'm just stitching another little bit. Okay, I'm going to stop. I'm going to pull this forward in front. I don't want to pull too hard. I don't want to pull my um, hem stitching out. I'm going to arrange it. Okay, I can feel there's no tucks in top or bottom. And I can stitch away. Okay, I'm going to stop again. Sometimes when you stop, leaving the needle in is good. Because if I'm going to do a bunch of pulling and arranging, if the needle isn't holding the fabric, it can actually pull right out. So I'm going to again pull. I'm going gently arranging everything to the left-hand side. Placing this hand underneath here. And... Again, I'm ready to go, no tucks, no. Okay, again, my needle's in. I'm gonna take another minute to pull along. If you have a very small, narrow uh, wrist, this would be even a little tighter. You might only be able to stitch a little smaller length at a time. This is fairly wide men's coat sleeve, so. Okay, I can see I'm nearly back around to my starting point there. I'm just going to again be sure to clear everything underneath. Be sure that there is no tucks and away we go. Okay, on the last little bit. Okay, so I reached back at the beginning. And the test then is to turn it the right way out and just see, did you actually get any tucks? So hopefully not. And ta-da, my uh, coat.
coat uh, sleeve is sewn to the lining and I don't see any tuck there so great that's completed and I will do the very same on the second side so here I have now my lining attached to both the facing and the sleeves or the sleeve hem, should I say. Um, and so what's remaining now is the actual hem of the coat or jacket itself. Um, and once I do this, the garment is completely sealed up and completed, it's finished. So what you want to do is just take a moment to think, is there anything else I want to do before I seal this in? And one thing you would normally do at this stage is go in and do shoulder pads or wadding or anything like that on the inside. So you can do the buttons and buttonholes after, however. OK, so the bottom the hem is um, the same, I suppose, in one way as the sleeve hem. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to take this now. Sometimes you'll have a tuck. In this case, I have a tuck that comes from the top and it goes all the way down to the bottom. So if you have that, a tuck that goes all the way to the bottom, you know, you can line that up with your um, centre back uh, seam there. And just be sure the tuck is going the same way on the top as it is on the bottom, that you haven't twisted it around the other way. Um, if on the pattern, sometimes the the tuck is gone by the time it gets to the bottom it goes into nothing so you might not have a tuck here and I notice have already stitched that in okay so sometimes people forget that they've put a tuck into the pattern and they haven't stitched it and when they go to line this up they're out by about five centimeters um, because the tuck is two and a half centimeters so doubled that's five okay so just look out for that and basically we'd be doing the same thing. We'd be taking this and kind of going like this. This should end up like that. It should be right side of this to right side of that. So it needs to sew this way. So, so what do we do then? We've got this whole thing and how do we get into it? Everything is sealed up. So um, there is a uh, couple of options, but the main thing to do is just come from one side here and come in like your hand again with your hand into no man's land and um, grab it and you can basically stitch all the way up all the way along one side and just leave this side open and you just hand stitch it sometimes depending on what's happening on the corners here you can hand stitch both sides like for example you'll see there is overhang um, allotted for this garment so when I um, put this to here you can see that the lining overhangs which is supposed to happen and which was designed into our pattern to happen to leave more room this ends up leaving us with a little issue on the corner here at the front okay um usually what you can do is you sort of just lose the overhang for this small section just otherwise what you'd have is a, a funny kind of bit here that um, has a slight hole because you have to if you want to do the overhang you're going to be left with a, a sort of a piece here that's that's like a hole okay so usually I just sort of veer it in um, uh, for a section about that long okay maybe 15 centimeters um, so I tend to uh, leave both sides open because I'll hand stitch that side and that side to, to veer that in OK, so that's usually my way. So I'll leave that section open and I'll come back and I'll just, like I said, go into no man's land, grab my, say, my tuck and my centre back and I'm going to pull it back inside out. So again, a bit like the sleeve or everything looks very peculiar. But once I have that held or again, possibly better to pin it for yourselves and then pull it through. I know I'm on the right track, so I'm going to go ahead and pin that. And maybe put another pin here just so it holds while I pull through. And again, be gentle, increase anything too much, and pull it all the way inside out. 
is better just so that things are maybe less uh, wrinkled a bit. Okay, and then it looks like that. So then it makes more sense and you think, okay, that's not too bad. Line up my seam with my seam. So for the moment, I'm just going to pin the um, seams a little bit past it and then all the way along to the other side as well, leaving my sort of 15 or 20 centimeters at the end unpinned and unstitched. Okay, so this is nicely pinned and I'm just going to stitch it along. It's the very same um, as the sleeve hem in terms of the machine. It's easier because it's not curved, you just place it in the machine and stitch right the way along, keeping the excess fabric out of the way and be sure you have no tucks. So that's quite a, a simple stitch. Okay, so I have completed that stitch, stitching along my 1.5 all the way along the edge. That's what it looks like. That's what it looks like on the lining side. And now I'm going to pull the garment back through. Now this is a uh, reason why you need to leave a reasonable size opening here. So maybe 15 is a little small. Might want to leave 20 centimeters because you've got to push the whole entire garment back through this. So again, depending on your fabric, this is the bit that will definitely get the garment the most creased. So go very gently, okay? And if you have a thick coat fabric, you'll need to leave um, a, a longer space, you know? So um, even just, you could leave a longer space on one side because um, it's only the difference of a couple more hand stitches. But you can see just when you're gentle and patient with it, it will actually just pop through and straight away um, straighten it out, try and get rid of any major creasing that happens. And so that we have a one lined jacket. The lining is attached all the way at the bottom. And you can see that it just has this small section here that we need to hand stitch and or pin. And I will use a slip stitch for that. You can see there's excess there, but once you've sewn it, it will overhang a little bit. So I've kind of managed to keep a little bit of my overhang. But, but either way, just stitching it up neatly really here in this corner in whatever fashion that you can will um, suffice. Okay, this is a little awkward for me to film this, but I'm gonna attempt. So I have pulled back this corner and I'm doing my little um, buttonhole stitch on my catch here. So I've done one stitch and then I'm making a second stitch, which makes a loop and pin my needle through that. And that um, knots it, and that is a nine, and there is your knee. Okay, so I'll have to move this up. Okay, so I am coming, I'm starting right where the where my stitching finished. It will start it there, so I'm coming right back up there. so it feels comfortable which I want to sort of go in this direction so I'm turning it around and now I am stitching so my thread is now coming out from the calico and I'm going to go and straight above that and take a little section about 0.5 in measurement across kind of on the um, fold of the lining so then it comes out and I'm coming straight back underneath where that comes out and I'm taking it a 0.5 stitch on the calico then where that comes out of the calico going directly above that to go into the lining and take a 0.5 stitch in the lining and this is your slip stitching if you leave it loose it should be like straight lines and when you pull it tight then it um, is a very secure stitch and a very invisible stitch so it's a very lovely uh, finish 
I'm finishing the stitch and you generally will need to use it somewhere on any garment that you have finished so you can kind of maybe see the straight lines but as I pull it it um, secures it nicely so you can see I've finished my machine stitching there and then this just seals it up nicely and um, I can continue along with that stitch right the way along this bit. Okay, so you can see there's straight lines and I'm gonna pull every so often just to be sure. It's not too tight. If you pull too tight, it wrinkles up and gathers. But if you leave it loose, you'll see all the stitching. So I'm just gonna continue that way all the way along until there. So here I have um, continued the stitching all the way along and I'm gonna take out this and you see it will flow over again. So it might be a little bit bubbly there, but um, as it sits down, you can see that I've allowed for um, a bit of the overhang. There's maybe none here, but it just comes down quite quick to hang, having that extra overhang. And so that's the completed um, corner. Okay, so here is the end result of the coat or jacket that's lined, fully lined, fully attached at the hem and the, the neck facing um, and as you can see with the turned up sleeve there it's also attached at the sleeve hem and that completes this demonstration.